It's pretty simple. When Georgia is clicking on all cylinders, they're without a doubt the best team in the country. Now, does that mean Michigan, TCU, or Ohio State should just go ahead and give them the national championship trophy? Hell no. But I do find myself asking, if it was me, would I rather play last year's Georgia team that won the Natty or this year's Georgia team? Now, my answer may surprise you because I know how dominant N'Kobe Dean and Jordan Davis and that whole defense was, and they were an all-timer. Some they say they're the greatest defense ever. But this year's Georgia team has something even more dangerous than one elite side of the ball. They have balance. This Georgia team has a quarterback that has seen the mountaintop and is playing his best ball, which he should. I mean, the guy's the same age as Lamar Jackson, but that's neither here nor there. And this roster has more ways to beat you than last year's team did. Now, if the defense isn't playing up to the elite level, they can win shootouts. They can also win grinded out, low scoring games. And while they've maintained that toughness and that identity from 2021, they're more chameleon-like than ever, which makes them more dangerous than ever. So I've been asked if I would take Georgia or the field. Well, with this squad and roster, give me the dogs, making it back to back. Mm. And bring in co-host, friend, honoree, 35 years old, mind of a scientist, former Heisman candidate, and Michigan quarterback David Cohn. And when he makes sure he protects the city at night, you see that guy jumping around from rooftops? That's David Michigan. But we don't ask That's a whole different guy. That's a whole different, yeah. It's a whole different guy, Green Hawk. Uh, and then my other co-host, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, six foot <laughs> four. He's got mitts, people. I mean, you can't get anything by this I'm guy. He should be playing goalie for the U.S. I still got Blaine, Blaine Crane. Uh, all right, all compliments aside, guys. Georgia the field, who are you taking? Go ahead. With my life on the line. Life on the line. No Michigan. You never played <laughs> uh, it. You just landed here. I'm just trying to live. It. You're just, trying, just trying, to trying to live. live. You're just trying to live. Give me Bulldogs. Okay. Give me Bulldogs. I like that. Blaine, Georgia, dot, 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 or the field? I mean, I could sit here and just, you know, be that guy who has the wild takes and be creative, but I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's got to be Georgia. I don't know how you sit here and take the field. I mean, I, I think their best matchup, the, the best chance for them to lose is their first game. That's Ohio State. Do I feel like Michigan's a better football team than Ohio State? Yeah, obviously. But styles make what? Styles make fights. And Michigan wants to what? So you're not going to beat Georgia running the ball 25 times. You're just not. You're going to have to spread it out. Last team we beat Georgia was who? Bama. Bryce Hoover, 400 plus. That's how you have to beat Georgia. The Washington sells you again. You know, I've, I've gone back and forth. Because I, it, I've heard Lugan Bill say it. I've heard a lot of people say it. And, and I can see where, where people are coming from with Ohio State has a better chance to beat Georgia because of the way they play and the players they have on the outside. And, and you look at, at, like Blaine said, the only team that, that beat Georgia. But I do think this is where J.J. McCarthy can kind of make the difference a little bit for Michigan. Mm -hmm. Michigan, if, if they do play Georgia in the national championship, and again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but those are the favorite teams. Michigan plays with a physical edge. Now, I know you're not going to go out there and bully Georgia, most likely. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very tough to do. If you're going to move the ball on Georgia, it's going to have to be a very balanced attack or you got to hit big plays through the air, similar to what Michigan did versus Ohio State. But part of me believes that Michigan can limit Georgia's possessions somewhat by the way they play. And they can keep it close. And J.J. McCarthy on those third and sixes, on those third and sevens, is athletic enough to run for the first down or at least extend the play enough to have a chance to convert some of those. Because that's where Michigan got beat last year. Outside of Georgia lining up on offense and just running bread and butter stuff and it working, when Michigan was on offense, McNamara was not a threat to run. They were very one-dimensional in what they did. Georgia was able to mix coverages. They felt fine up front. And a stalemate against last year's team, there was no difference maker for Michigan in the pocket that could create that big time play or that drive extending play. This year, they actually have that. Now, can JJ do it by himself? No. Is he a good enough thrower to keep Georgia honest in the back end? We have to see if he can continue to put it together. But I don't want to confuse this year's Michigan team with last year's Michigan team. While the identity is the same, just as a defensive guy like I am looking at how to defend them, J.J. McCarthy makes me have to tinker with things in a way that Georgia didn't have to last year. That's the, the one difference. And I think, honestly, that's why Jim Harbaugh, that was one of the main reasons that Jim Harbaugh decided to go with J.J. McCarthy and not make the safe decision with Cade McNamara. Because, yeah, you can beat Rutgers with Cade McNamara. You can line up 
and, and, and bully a decent amount of the Big Ten with Cade McNamara, play action pass, hey, don't get his feet, don't turn you the ball Ohio over. State with them. But you're not beating Georgia with Cade McNamara. You're not. You're not. Yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, the more, I, the more I, I get it, I get that narrative, I think you can argue it logically. I'm just telling you, man, JJ's a little bit, it's a little bit different flavor, and, and I think that could be one of the things that just, all Mitch has to do is hang around, David. Mm -hmm. They have to come out and go up Keep by 14. Close in the fourth. And that's how they've played. You have a chance. And David Pollock hit the nail on the head that these two programs were in completely different positions last season. Yeah. Keep in mind, Jim Harbaugh hadn't beaten his biggest rival up to last year. Hatton won the conference. Hatton made the college football playoff. When those first cut when when all three of those things happened back to back to back, Michigan was playing with house money, with finally with a little bit of confidence that they could go in, that they could beat OSU, that they could uh, win the Big 10 championship. Georgia was in a different position. They had already done that. They had already won the conference. They had already um, made it to the national championship and had to yeah. watch, you know, Tua come in and complete a last second touchdown to lose to Alabama for another natty and they just lost to him in the SEC championship. The the one year when we all all finally agreed, man, Georgia could actually be the best team in the country. They were in completely different spots, and Kirby Smart had an entire month of game plan for that game. Just beat the brakes off of them. Now you look and, and you see, like, Michigan's kind of in a position that Kirby Smart and Georgia were in last year, where it's like, okay, well, now we've gotten to the college football playoff. We've beaten our rival two years in a row. Now maybe there's a little something extra. Maybe they can go for Yeah, it. and you've seen them. You've seen Georgia before. So mm -hmm. if you, a lot of the guys on this team this year, Played in that game last year. There's not going to be. There's going to be butterflies, but it's not. You at least know what's coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's you at least know what's coming. <clears throat> you know how you have to prepare and really how small the margin of error is. Uh, and and I want to get to the booster club in a second, uh, Blaine. But you know when when you look at at a potential you know Georgia and Michigan matchup, do you think maybe because look Brock Bowers has made a ton of plays all year. But let's not act like Georgia's receivers are this elite group. A.D. Mitchell coming back is going to be huge. Be he balled huge. in the in the Natty last year. But I, Georgia doesn't have a ton of weapons on the outside. That, you get A.D. Mitchell back, and you sub McConkey, you put Darnell Washington. How healthy Brock. is Lad? That's I, well, I appreciate Lad's going to be back. Right? Is he? Yeah, I'm well, back. I'm not worried about him. How healthy like is that? He? I mean. That's, well, I, in my head, Lad McConkey is yeah. healthy. He's going to be Lad McConkey. You put you put AD Mitchell out there, Lad McConkey, Darnell Washington, and Brock, Brock Bowers. Bowers. Well, you got a lot of things that's to worry about. That's well personnel, buddy. Oh. So I mean, it, that's the thing. So if it's a healthy Georgia team, and a lot of people don't talk about what, especially you go back in those playoffs last year, when it's third and five, third and six, you want to talk about JJ McCarthy's legs. Let's talk about Stetson's legs. Mm -hmm. That's huge too. Stetson's that guy, veteran guy. He's like forty three years old. It's thirty five, and he sees a chance to get a first down. He'll get that first down. And I get it when it's Michigan team. It's a different Michigan team, and I think it's a better Michigan team. But I still think one Georgia team last year was a lot better than this team this year. I think that their offense last year still averaged 40 points a game. Their offense last year statistically is better than their offense this year. But the, the styles make fights. And if McCarthy, if I'm Michigan, there's no way I'm going to get under center and just try to feed feedbacks, feedbacks, feedbacks. I'm doing what? I'm pitching backwards early like we saw in the Ohio State game. I'm throwing on first down. I'm pushing. The, it, the greatest thing for Michigan was to watch that LSU game. It's mm -hmm. the greatest thing. You now know this somewhat of the recipe how to beat Georgia. You're going to have to air the ball out. You're going to have to finesse Georgia. If you think you're going to line up and, and run the ball and those things down in Athens, in Athens Georgia, it's not going to happen. You have to finesse these guys. Yeah. And that might, I don't care if that hurts someone's feelings or this, but those are my, look at Jalen Carter. You think you're going to turn around and Consistently. say, Consistently. Here, here. No, yeah. he is going to, he's a number one pick. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and, and I think some of the points per game by by the offense was skewed last year because I swear, I think Georgia scored a defensive touchdown or a special teams touchdown in every mm. game. Hey, YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Check us out on all platforms, but turn that notification bell on too because we put out a ton of content pretty much daily that you're not going to want to miss as we peruse into basketball season. But is football season really ever over? Answer is no, it's not. So sub.